Alright guys, welcome back. So, as requested, big truck video. Uh, so some of you guys showed some interest in perhaps some big truck repairs. And that's what we've got right there. So it's a 2000 um, International 9900i. Uh, my brother just got done doing an in-frame overhaul on it. Uh, this truck has 934,000 miles on it. Uh, it's got the Cummins ISX CM570. It's 600 HPs on this little guy. So a 600 horse engine. Uh, she's bone stock. Uh, it lived to almost a million miles. Uh, let's see. So when they get an in-frame, they get new pistons and sleeves, uh, rod bearings, uh, main bearings. You do mains on this too? Yeah. Yep. So you do, it does mains too. Oil pump. Uh, yeah, oil pump. So the engine still still tore apart at this point. The oil pan's still off it. Uh, this one, what it, which cam is that? Uh, valve cam. So this one chewed up the valve cam. Uh, it's got some got a bad lobe on the valve cam. So this has a brand new cylinder head, uh, new valve cam, and so these have a, these are a twin cam. These are dual red cam engines. So but not like what we see on the cars, uh, because these have what they would consider a valve cam. So they've got the cam that's going to run uh, the valve train. So are these, these are what, four valve per cylinder? Yeah. So the four valve per cylinder, two intake, two exhaust, and then the other cam runs the injectors. Uh, so it is dual overhead cam, but a little different than what we're used to. Um, so now he's to the point where they have to run, run the rack on it, I guess is the, the term we would use in the shop, you know, generic term, uh, where you're gonna set the valve lash on the intake uh, valves, the exhaust valves, and on these, you also set uh, the jakes and the injectors. So uh, I'll show you a few of the parts that he took out of it, got rebuilt, and I'll show you a little bit of this process and uh, you know, see what you guys think. Give you guys an idea. So there's the camshaft. She's about 43 inches long. Uh, they're pretty good size. So if you get a load of that, uh, we'll take a look. Here it is. That's a bad day. That's not something you want to see. Uh, so you can imagine, you know, what that does. You know, when these cam lobes get tore up, there was a couple on them in here. I saw, yeah, so here's another one. But, you know, 900, almost a million miles, uh, it's bound to happen. A uh, customer complaint was uh, oil loss or burning oil. Here's the sleeve out of the number one cylinder. If you guys can see that or not. But you've got that heavy scuff mark right there, and you can actually feel it's actually a ridge in there. Uh, so this one was out of the number one. You shine a light in there, see if that, yeah, there we go. So you guys can see that scuff mark there. Uh, the piston rings on this cylinder were broke. Here is a piston out of this one, guys. This, this isn't the number one, is it? No. no. So I'll give you an idea the size of these. Uh, you know, almost a five and a half inch bore. Uh, pretty good size. Not your typical typical rod, you know, like out of a little Hondo. It's got doge, but it ain't VT. Yeah, yeah, she's a, she's a doach, but she ain't VTEC. So yeah, four bolt main caps on those little guys. They're big, they're heavy. They're not the biggest, but uh, definitely a lot bigger than what we're used to seeing in our shop. So you can see, you know, the size of the piss and wrist pins out of it right now, obviously. Whoa! Two piecers, so the skirt kind of floats, you know, a bunch of crap's falling off it. It's no big deal. Uh, the skirt kind of floats on there a little bit. Now these these do have a little bit of movement when you put the wrist pin in, do they? Yeah, yeah, and they've, they've okay. been updated to now uh, Cummins has gone from a two piece to uh, to now just a one piece with an integrated skirt. So oh, okay. So they aren't uh, they are not uh, two piece anymore. Gotcha. And you weren't your uh, now are these sleeves the same as like what you took out? Didn't the mother sleeves have that removable yeah, ring? Yeah, the, huh? yeah. These, these were prior to an anti polishing ring, which is what Cummins has, has gone to now. Uh, in order to stop carbon buildup on the rings. Oh, okay. They've gone to uh, an anti-polishing uh, as well as uh, vibration dampen down here. Oh, okay. Um, so that was that brass ring that yep. was on there. Yeah. Yep. So the other ones that, of course, you guys didn't see it. I didn't put it on Facebook either, but they had like a brass ring here and then your regular O-ring. And these are a wet sleeve, right? Yeah. Yep. So they go in surrounded by coolant. So when you're putting them in, one little screw up on that guy creates a pretty bad day for you. So there's the engine. Like I say, it's not all the way together yet, but it is at the point where the valve adjustment needs to be made. So it's got a barring tool in the front of the engine, which essentially is just a big jumbo ratchet. And, uh, you know, I come over here. Of course, you got the big snail. You guys love that stuff. Uh, then we come up here. 
what do we got here? These uh, are these are gonna be your jakes. Brake, yeah, so these are gonna be your engine brakes. I guess it's gonna be the technical term. I don't know if these are a Jacobs brake or not. Right, Cummins brake. Cummins brake. Yep. yep. And then uh, we're gonna have what do we got here? Intake. Uh, uh, exhaust. Okay, exhaust intake. No injector. Injector. Or, yeah, there you go. Injector and intake. Yep. So intake, injector, exhaust, and what we're gonna be doing is going through getting the engine. Um, oh, I'm is not, it? I'm not number one. Right okay, now. is it top dead center? Do you know? Uh, no, number one, not top dead. Center. They're not top no. dead center when you make the adjustment. Okay, so you have marks on the front of the engine, or what do yeah. you, what do you yeah. go by? Off the harmonic balancer, uh, we've got three positions: A, oh, B, okay. and C. A being one and six, and B three and five. You know, on through in there, doing oh, okay. in two two piston sets or or your opposings, non opposings. Yeah, your companion cylinders. Yes, companions. There you go. Yep. All right, sweet. Let's see what uh, is involved. All right, so the engine's already barred over on uh, the first mark, the A mark. Um, and then, so we can do everything on this cylinder when it's on that mark. And right now, when we get done with this one, we'll go to number six. We'll spin the engine over again, another 360. Uh, so that'll be, you know, 180 of the cam. And then we can do the number six. And then we'll go in the firing order, you know, the cylinder five and so on. So, but we'll show the procedure here on the first one, and I guess it's yeah, the tappet is, is right here. We're yeah. we're making our adjustment just just under the tappet uh, on top of the bridge. Yeah. So you got these bridges. So the you know being a four valve head, uh, it has these two bridges that go you know valve to valve, and then you've got the rocker arm, and of course the cam lays underneath here. And I'm just trying to see the cam. Yeah the, yeah, the cam basically, you know, we're on the, the lowest, you know, apex of the cam. So, you know, that's when you make the valve adjustments. But one thing I observed is the plunger for the injector is almost at the peak of its apex or is yeah. at the peak of its apex. Uh, so the injector is actually plunged right now. So the injector is, you know, it's pushed down. Um, so these, these, I assume, are not set with... No. You know, a valve lash, right? No, they're set with a torque method of 70 inch pounds at, at bottom stop. Okay, so you'll loosen the jam nut, yeah. tighten the center nut. 70 inch pounds? 70 inch pounds, yep. Yeah. Without a no click. Uh, so oh, okay, yeah, so they just yeah, want to cut. It's a dial, you can't use a click tight uh, when you're making that adjustment. Torco meter. Oh, yeah, she's old school. Yeah, that's sweet, dude. Bought that off a of crackhead, I think. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Some guy that stopped, <laughs> really? stopped in here that I bought a. Uh, give me seventy bucks, man. Give me seventy bucks. Heck yeah, I bought a uh, rotor tiller off a. Of, I guess we can call him crackheads. Yeah, <laughs> he had a brand new rotor tiller in the back of his vehicle for like a hundred bucks. <laughs> it was uh, Honda five and a half horse rear tine, right. brand spanking new dude. Said, Never even had no gas in it. He says, "Give me a hundred bucks." I said, "Yes, sir." <laughs> Uh, intake is 14, exhaust 27. Uh, it's been the, the ongoing thing with Cummins since Cummins started making motor. Every adjustment, intake 14, exhaust 27. Oh really? Yeah, they haven't they haven't changed it through every series of motor they make. It's it always seems to be the same. Huh. So we're gonna go under, on between the tap. It this one has a, a very excessive amount of play right now because this is one of the new rocker arms that rode on the. I had to change because of the bad cam. Oh okay. Yeah, so these, these rocker arms, I don't know if you notice or not, but they ride directly on the cam. So they've got a roller, you know, uh, being overhead cam, and uh, the rocker arm rides directly on top of it. Yeah, so, so, I mean, I, I like to just over tighten them a little bit, just kind of, just to make sure everything's yeah. seated. And then and I just bring it down until we've got a slight, slight bit of drag. Now that's the, the big debatable topic on feeler gauges what's correct uh, I guess it's always been my method is it should feel like it it does when you drag it over top of a magnet of course then everybody's like yeah everybody what, what never... kind of magnet you know I know some guys that want it to just you know kind of float in there but I've always done it so it's just got like a little just a little scuff I guess um, yeah yeah just I mean you can you can feel the drag but it's not it's not sloppy I always check you know we've got no lash and, and, and a nice decent amount of drag. Yeah. That's 14 for the intake. And then we'll move on to the exhaust. And 
one thing I found with this motor so far is nothing has been tight. Absolutely everything that I've, I've put a wrench on has been loose. Oh, really? Yeah. And this thing was virgin when you started? Yeah, yeah. Over tighten just ever slightly. Back it off. Very little drag. Of course, if you're... If your sense of drag is, you know, slightly off, but yeah, you know, what are you going to be a half a thousand? Yeah, yeah. The, the tolerance is plus or minus a thousand. It's not. Uh, I mean, it is precise, but obviously everything changes with heat, with yeah, you know, and uh, but I mean, it's it's just like Eric said, you know, like dragging it over a magnet. And this is the exhaust. Yep, yeah, yeah. This was getting? exhaust 27. Oh, 27. So we got intake, exhaust, our engine brakes are set at 0.27, just a hair over a quarter of an inch. <laughs> so we've, we've got a quarter of an inch here, uh, which I mean seems like an awful lot of play, but that, that's showing absolutely perfect right now, just a slight and bit you, of... You got your gauges stacked up, so you're at the 0.275 yeah, yeah, or whatever. Yeah, 0.27, yeah. Huh, and and just a slight bit of drag, and it's, and it's absolutely perfect, so we won't make any adjustment there, but we will uh, make sure that the damn nut is tight. So in our uh, video that we did where we took a little record call, we were slamming on the old exhaust brake a lot because a lot of guys like that. And frankly, it sounds cool, you know, you know, jackhammers blaring. So what I'll do, instead of going through, you know, the concept of engine brakes here, I'll throw a link in the description uh, right from Jacobs. Uh, they've got a little YouTube video out there on how, how an exhaust brake works and the theory behind it. And they show, you know, the cycling of the valves and, you know, when the exhaust valve stays open and, uh, you know, how that overlaps through the, uh, through the power stroke to, you know, retard the engine. So I'll, uh, I'll put a link there so you guys can, you know, better, better understand how exhaust brakes work. Now this, this one here, like I said, we're adjusting the injector at the bottom of the stroke, uh, top of the cam lobe. Uh, Cummins wants you to back it out at least two turns in order to plunge any, any excessive, uh, any excess oil or any excess fuel out of the injector. They want you to do it two or three times. And, uh, and then once, once it is plunged, then we're gonna take it to 70 inch pounds just a hair below the 75 right there. And then that's where Cummins wants their injector set. Huh, that's super interesting. Yeah, that's, that's the torque wrench. We always <laughs> torque the spec on our show. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So, so that, that's cylinder one. That's one cylinder. And then we're going to bar to the next one, which is uh, in series is going to be, no, it'll be B, which will take us in. Oh, okay, I one, see. One, five, three, six, two, four. Gotcha. So, so, okay, so when we come back around, so we don't go A, yeah, A to yeah, A, yeah. we'll come back around, we'll go to B, then it'll be yeah. five, and yeah. eventually when we come back to A, we'll, we'll be, be on, on six. We'll be on okay, six, so. all right, I misunderstood that right in the beginning. All right, so we'll get down here, we'll bar this little guy over. Yep, more, get junk. more junk. So he gets them dropped off at his shop, just like we do ours. Just sometimes and, ours come in on bigger trucks. Yeah, yeah, it looks like you got a little guy this time. Probably a Ford. <laughs> I'm sure they can stack it out there next to the other four. Yeah. <laughs> see, I, I might, made a mark for A. It's, it's really hard to see, but you yeah, can, no, uh, can there's a that. bump on the yeah, on okay. the cover so, for... Scrape some of your DuPont overhaul. Oh, yeah. There we go. So now we can see the little bump on the cover. Yeah. Hold that yeah, so now we're going to go to B. <clears throat> I don't know if you can hear that, but she's got compression. Do you pull the coil wire off so the next time yeah. start? Yeah. Okay. There's B. Whoop, right there. Yeah, we're just gonna put us on five. Yeah, so we can see that's lined up perfectly. And as far as your barring tool, is that a special tool or? Uh, no, it's, uh, inside the, behind the oil fill is a three quarter adapter that's oh. already in the engine. You just pull the oil fill and it's right in there behind it. Oh, that's handy. Yep. Except for when there's a radiator and yeah. everything else is wet. <laughs> Air charge coolers. It's really not that handy. <clears throat> All right, so now that, that should essentially put us on five. So I, I always check and, you know, everything's got play. Uh, injector is, is at the bottom. I always look at the spring, make sure that, you know, everything is where, where it says that it should be. Oh, gotcha. Because there is always a chance that, 
at some point in the life of the truck, somebody put a balance around that doesn't belong on the truck, or, uh, so your marks could not, you know, could be off. Uh, huh. Jeez. Yeah, I see the uh, the injector back there. It's just interesting. I mean, it's not completely at the apex of that cam, but must be to where they want it. <clears throat> All right, now this is also one of the cylinders that we did uh, that had the bad lobe on the cam. So oh, okay. this is a new rocker. It's got three, <coughs> three new rockers. All right, so this time we'll start out again at 14. It's going to be the exhaust. Or the, uh, yeah, the, yeah, on the back side, this, this is now opposite. Yeah, opposite. So now yeah. this is our exhaust, yeah. the, the first one. So we'll do that one first. That'll be our 27. tap it's like to stick. It's amazing those bridges don't just like fall off. Yeah. Right, just over tighten just slightly. Back it off. A little bit of drag. One two barbecue baby. That's how I'm saying. You're supposed to say that. <laughs> I'm supposed to say that? Yeah. I come up with some other cliche thing. Nice little bit of drag. Right. Then we say boom. Boom. I'm trying to get them to make videos, guys, so. We're trying. We're trying. I'm just a little busier than Eric. Up, up at his shop. We're always busy, dude. Our phone's always bing bonging at the door, and people are unsubscribing, and <laughs> they get pissed with background noise. Do they? Yeah, you might not be very successful. Yeah, <laughs> they, they, <laughs> they, they like, like this shot. Yeah, four air hammers smoking off in the background, phone ringing. So there's our intake and our exhaust. Boom. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now we're gonna check uh, check our lash, our quarter inch. Yeah, quarter inch, and it's beautiful. Good drag. No play. Perfect. Yep. Nope, no adjustment needed. That's on the exhaust brake. Yep. But we are gonna check it. I do not know what the hell is up with that. What's the matter with it? It won't go over. Try that on a different one. Going, I just used it on that one. Fits on that one. Hmm. Give me a crescent wrench. Get that one out of your truck that we showed in the video. <laughs> <laughs> right, so that's tight. Alright, injector. See, nothing's tight. Absolutely nothing on this motor has been tight. I don't know how it stayed together. 900,000 miles. Well, must have been tight enough. That was tight. Yeah, that was tight. <clears throat> well, it's just a little over 100 inch pounds. So that's what, just under 12 foot pounds for quick conversion. And there's our 70. Yeah, that was, those were definitely tight. Have you ever checked the lash on the injector when the cam is on its flat spot to know if there's any play in them? No, you generally on uh, the Cummins 855s, the older Cummins is, they were set at the very top and, and, you, and you, you dialed them into zero lash. Oh, okay, there, there gotcha. Were, there were two different methods. One, one was yeah. a torque method like what we're doing here at the bottom. The other yeah. was a zero lash method at the top. Now are these injectors, are they full mechanical? Completely mechanical. Okay, yeah. completely but, mechanical. Uh, but they are controlled on... Fuel, fuel on this side is controlled. Timing and uh, fuel metering is done on this side with the fuel metering valves oh, and, yeah. and, and that. Yeah, yeah. The fuel going. Uh, there's also, I mean, Cummins website shows a, an awesome fuel schematic of huh. of uh, of this motor, and it's. Uh, but there's no actual wires on the injectors, no, no, so injectors no. are just mechanically plunged. Yeah, but electronically metered and timed. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. It's all voodoo. It's all voodoo magic, baby. Anarchy, witchcraft. All right, one five. Yeah, we're, right, we're gonna bar again. Yeah, we're gonna go to three. We're gonna end up screwing up this whole process because we're here. Ooh, compression. We just did the video on the Honda where we. Uh, a little bit more. Yeah, that's good. 
Yeah, we just did the video on the old Hondu. We had to do a leak down test on that. And, uh, did you get it wrong? Nah, she didn't have much compression. No. No. 60, 90, 125, and like 175. All right, let's that. We'll just switch it up. We'll do, do ooh, all right, that one's actually tight. We'll do the injector first. So in firing order, we went one five. Now we're on three. Yeah, see, now that one's backing off yeah. right, where, right where it should. That other one was just a little tight. Like I said, I'm not 100% certain on Cummins' procedure here with the backing it off and plunging it. But they say to do it twice, we do it twice. We do it nice, because we do it twice. Yeah, <laughs> we, we hope you, not, we yeah. hope not. You don't want to do that like on engine rebuilds and stuff, yeah. obviously. Yeah. Yeah. If I got to put two patches on a tire, then I'm not going to yeah. do that. But... Uh, so average average customer pay on one of these for an in-frame, just roughly? Uh, the, this, this motor will be roughly, well, with the camshaft and whatnot, probably 16000 Yeah. So these truckers, you know, they come in, they roll in for an in-frame, and some of these are actually done out of maintenance. Uh, so, you know, there's some guys that will do them at, you know, 100,000, 100, or yeah, 100,000. <laughs> a million, you know, a mil you know, one and a quarter million miles, they'll actually just do an in-frame job. So piston sleeves, rods and mains, head, uh, you know, sometimes, you know, you get a new turbo. Uh, is that is that cat still down there? Uh, no. Did I roll out of here? Yeah, that's gone. I got I actually I got a cat in the parking lot, an old C model that we're doing next week, and then I've got another twin turbo Acer that we're doing uh, the following week. Ooh, twin screw. All right, so we're back on intake. YouTube is torque Nazis. Well, we've got rid of most of them on our channel. They don't, they don't whine too much. But you get some hardcore trucker watching you. Yeah. Yeah, you might go nuts. Everybody's got a buddy, you know. Yeah. No, our our channel's all good company. We don't get too many, too many torque Nazis. We call them armchair experts. And there's our, there's our drag we're feeling. That's 27, who's now well, exhaust is now on this side. So we're on the front of the engine. So you were you were saying that these engines are pretty notorious for not living past a half a million miles? Yeah, Cummins uh, had uh, and a lot of issues with sleeves. The uh, this it's perfect, perfect drag. It's interesting, yeah, yeah. Jake's. Yeah. Uh, the sleeve that you showed them, every, everybody a picture of. Uh, all right, we got to find a wrench that fits. Well, it's half inch. Grab a thirteen. I know my metric, baby. I don't deal with none of this American stuff. Is this all American? Man, I wouldn't even know what to do here. My American yeah, wrench yeah, is yeah, like most, most of it. That thirteen? Yeah. Huh? It's Boom. Just, it's just uh, the sleeve that you showed a uh, picture of was coming to its downfall, where most. Most of your most of your big diesel engines, when when the sleeve is inserted into the block, the block retains the sleeve pretty much to the base of the of the sleeve. Oh, sure. On, on a Cummins, when it sit on an ISX, on not all all Cummins, but on ISX, the the top portion of the sleeve is retained in the block. Oh, okay. All of this hangs into the oil pan. Sure. And it's held on with four little fingers, and and I I believe you know I mean I'm no engineer, but I believe. Through harmonics over time, that the sleeve, what, what every damage, every one that I've seen with a rod sticking out through the side has been because the sleeve has broke off at the base. Oh, really? And come down with a piston, and when the piston came up, it had nowhere to go except out. Out the side. Carnage, dude. People on this show love carnage. Uh, all right. Let me just double check that. Yeah. Because we're doing talking, and I don't get Oh yeah, we're totally gonna screw this up. Yeah. And I'll call you like after I get the video edited, of course, by then you'll, you'll know. 
All right, so we're there's one five three. Thanks. Now we're going to be at A, which is going to put us right back. Uh, three sixty on the crank, one eighty on the cams. <clears throat> that puts us on six. Let's see what comes after C. Everybody knows their alphabet. A. That's right. Kind of back where we started, but but you'll see now that number one actually has an intake valve that's down. Yep. The injector is up, and uh, the exhaust is still. So yep. we're we're so where it's at. starting on the intake stroke on one. But number six here, everything should be loose. Yep. And all the way down. Yep. Sweet. Okay, right, so that's a little bit of the process of running the rack on your Cummins ISX. Um, so I hope you found that entertaining, educational, to say the least. Um, probably what I'll do, you'll have this thing running tomorrow. Uh, I hope so. Maybe. Yeah, I got to do yeah. that New York City run, so I don't. Uh... Oh yeah. So you got to take a, a duck boat <laughs> down to New York City. So there's this company up the road that builds these amphibious boats for duck boat tours and uh, they're like just this weird wonky looking thing he's got to run it down to New York City I got a picture of it whoa hang on there folks so that's what he's got to tow tomorrow <laughs> here, here to New York City yeah here down to New York City so maybe one of you guys down in the city get a little ride on this little fella where do they take him uh, that one's going to Portugal Maybe some of you guys in Portugal will get a ride on this little fella. <laughs> it was made, made right here in Avoca. Made right here in downtown Avoca, population 900. Yeah. You just, oh, you just flat tow this thing? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, yeah, you can see the back of the wrecker there. Just underneath it, and away we go. Hee ha. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. So, a long ride. Yep. Um, so, he's going to tow it down New York City tomorrow so it can head off to Portugal. Isn't that weird? Um, Maybe some of our Portuguese viewers have seen one of those. I don't know if we have any Portuguese viewers. But if we do, let us know in the comments. Uh, in any case, we're going to finish this up. Got a few more cylinders to go and uh, get this thing done. If he, if he does get this pig running tomorrow or the next day, I'll come get some footage. Maybe I can get the initial startup. That's always dramatic, um, especially if it goes bad. <laughs> <laughs> there ain't no skin off my back. Um, but. That's it. So anyhow, check us out on Google Plus, Facebook. I'll put Sonny's service of Avoca LLC Facebook in the description below. Um, you guys hound Doug in the comments. That's Doug. Uh, he owns this joint, formerly owned by Sonny, our father. And, um, you know, hound him to make the videos because you guys want videos. And they have carnage, man. They get stuff in all the time that's blown up, destroyed. And we've got Wayne. Oh yeah, and they got Wien, so that's the other guy here. We'll, ju we'll just leave it at that. If you guys like commentary, <laughs> possibly a little bit of some uh, colorful language, you'll love Wayne. <laughs> and uh, and we got Curry. Oh yeah, then we got yeah we got yeah, Curry. We got, we got there's so many people here that would add color to this channel. I would call it uh, to the Sunny Service Show. Look at that, boom. Um, anyhow. Leave it in the comments. You bug them. Maybe I'll buy a camera. I'll help them get out on YouTube if you guys want to see more super big truck stuff. So click the subscribe button for us if you haven't done that. Click the notification bell so you get the notifications in your inbox each and every week. And just remember, viewers, if we can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching. We can do it. You can do yeah, it. Yeah, dude, they love it. Build them up, man. You got to pump your people up. If we can do it, you can do it. That's right. right.